Hey everyone, welcome. Just a couple of seconds, we'll get set up and then we'll get started. All right, so there we go. All right. All right, so hello everyone, welcome. Um, my name is Maria and I work at NZ Aerosports and you are tuning in for the last Woogie webinar that we have. And today we have Roy Janssen joining us for the second time around. Roy, welcome. Good, uh, good evening, I guess, for you. Yeah, I'm happy to be back. <laughs> Very nice. Loving the background. You're doing such a great job promoting everyone. So thank you so much. Uh, Roy's going to be taking today as a bit of a workshop and he's going to talk about training for peak performance. He's talking about goal setting, about what's important in terms of starting the training. Uh, he's going to talk about meet or competition preparation and then the competition itself. And you're very welcome, guys, everyone, please ask questions. This is your chance. We've got 40 minutes of time. I'm going to be looking at the chat box and then we'll take questions as they come if they're relevant to what Roy's talking about at that moment. And other than that, we're going to do a QA and a at the end. So with that note, um, Remember, you can use the chat box to ask the questions or you can raise your hand, okay? So otherwise, other than that, your, your mics are muted, everyone. So just keep that in mind, all right? Roy, over to you. Thank you. Uh, Guy, thank you very much for tuning in for this uh, webinar. So uh, as Maria discussed, um, I'm going to speak about preparing for peak performance, but it's going to be in a nutshell because with 40 minutes of time, obviously, I don't have uh, a lot of time to devote uh, time for just one topic. So I'm just gonna go a bit through the list. I hope it can give you some information that can help you um, making a better peak performance. And um, we're gonna speak a bit of goals and, and this uh, kind of stuff. So there are actually four main topics that I will discuss in order to come to the, the main topic of uh, peak performance. That's uh, goal setting, of course, that, that's where it all starts. Then we have uh, the training that's going to start. So when you start training, you know, what are you going to do where we need to focus on in order to have a good peak performance at a competition. Then we have the meet preparation. So this is going to involve the stuff prior to a competition. How do you need to set up your training? What is important? What should we not be doing? Um, so when we have a good setup for this, then we have also bigger chances to do a good competition. The thing is, you can be really good in training, but if you cannot back it up with a meet, you know, it doesn't really mean nothing. And this is the main goal. So today we're going to, the end uh, objective is a peak performance at a competition, not a training, but at the meet itself. Um, so where does it all start? It starts, of course, with setting goals, you know. Um, so it, it's a, in my situation, it starts with a dream, like, hey, who do I want to be, you know, and um, it's not like, who do I want to be as Roy Johnson? But I was thinking like, you know, I would, I would like to be a professional skydiver uh, or I want to be a national champion, whatever it is. This is not about being a world champion or not. This is about your personal uh, goal. Whatever that is, you know, it's, it will be the same thing as for, for world championships. So who do you want to be? And really dare to dream because this is something where people are scared of. Uh, what I see too many times is when people, they are almost like a bit shy to dream, you know, to, uh, to say like, hey, I would like to do this or, you know, I would like to do that because they think, you know, what, what do people say? And um, I think it's very important to have a vision because a vision is going to help you to achieve the goals that you want. Without a vision, it's going to be hard. And also here, you know, we don't need to be shy because we should be dreaming sometimes quite big, you know, and... Um, we come later to it to the things that we have to do in order to try to achieve the, the dreams that we have but you know a lot of times i hear people say you know but these people are saying this about me but it's someone's opinion about you doesn't need to become reality and i think this is very important so just have the trust trust yourself and your skills um i think that's always uh, very important and uh, 
do not listen to the naysayers. You always have people that say, ah, oh, you cannot do this or you cannot do that, you know. And even against all odds, people can do amazing things. And I, I think this is really something important to, to all of you, you know, just have a dream and, and just go your own way with that. And probably more than anything, trust yourself. Because there's a lot of people out there, they have a lot of qualities, they can do amazing stuff, but start with trusting yourself. Because if you don't trust yourself, how do you expect others to trust, you know? And so this is a little bit the, the, the preparation of the goal setting, you know, what do you want? And, and you know, trying to, trying to make those steps, I think this is very important. And probably also, you know, think a little bit outside the box because, you know, people we, at least here, you know, in this area, grow up a lot that you should be doing this, you should be doing that, and you cannot do that. And I think this is not good because if you have a dream, you know, you have to work hard for it and, and you know, think outside the box. I think this is one of the things that is also uh, quite important. And uh, you, you don't need to um, be afraid of, of making mistakes or don't be afraid to, to fail because you only will learn by making mistakes. And I think that is really important. And um, you need to get comfortable to get out of your comfort zone. And this is one of the things because this is, uh, you know, you cannot achieve your personal best with staying in your comfort. And uh, the people that I train a lot, uh, they know that I always like to push, uh, that I always say, hey, you know, you can do better. And at the end, they always prove themselves that they can do it. So, you know, get out of your comfort zone. I think this is important. And I also think when you're doing goal setting and you have a certain goal that you really want to achieve, and it doesn't matter if you're doing four-way or eight-way or you do free fly or canopy, you try to surround yourself as much as people likewise like you that have the same passion, the same desire, the same goals uh, that, you know, that uh, are enthusiastic and stuff. Because if you stay around with the people that are not really thinking the same way, then, you know, you're going to sometimes hold back, you know, they draw you down a bit. So um, surround yourself with the people like you. I think this is also a very important uh, topic. And when you make goals, always also ask yourself the question like, you know, are you willing to make the sacrifices that it takes from the goal that you like? Um, it's just an example that I think I've mentioned it maybe also in the, in the previous webinar is, you know, if you ask me if I want to be a world champion cycling, I will tell you, yes, of course I want. But if you ask me, do you want to make the sacrifices to spend seven, eight hours a day on a bicycle? And I say, you know, thank you, you know, so whatever your goal have or whatever dream you have, that's totally fine. But also do not only see it from the romantic side, also understand that with the higher you put the, the bar, the, the harder you have to work for it. And I think this is really uh, important because if you set goals, we can be very ambitious, that's good, but do not forget that also have to be a bit realistic. Um, you also can, of course, make goals in steps. You can do step by step. And for example, first you're gonna be, uh, you wanna achieve a certain average or you wanna see if, uh, achieve a certain podium place in, in your country. And then maybe you can think a bit European or uh, Asian, whatever it is, and then step by step. But to do peak performance, we have to set goals. And I think there are uh, three main things that you have to do. First, of course, set the goal, make a plan of how you're gonna reach that goal. And then the last thing is also the commitment that is gonna take to achieve that goal, the plan that you make, are you willing to do it? So those three things I think are really important to do. Set a goal, a plan to achieve your goal, and the commitment that it's going to take to do that. And I think if you already cover all those things and you give it a lot of thoughts and you, you take the points that I just mentioned, I think it's already a very good setup in order to not fail. And failing is not a problem, but of course we want to make a, a goal that is realistic. Then of course, once you set your goals and you know what you want and you have your dream, you think, hey, you know, I, I really want to do this, awesome. Then the training is gonna start, you know, and, and this is also um, a very fun part. It should be fun because, you know, when you have a lot of fun in your training, uh, it's gonna give you a lot of energy, you know, it's almost endless energy. I think what is really important, if you're really looking for peak performance, you have to raise your standards. 
Because if you want to get the best out of you, if you want to be your 100%, you have to raise the standards more than normally. Because if we don't, we stay in our comfort and it's not really gonna, gonna work. We're just gonna do the thing that we're doing. And that um, is almost that it is from, from um, you, whenever we, when we now think like we should do this, it should become into we must do this, you know, because if you think like, yeah, I should be doing this, but actually I'm sitting here on the couch while I should be running or I should be going to the gym, then you should be, you know, you must do it because you put the goals there. And I think that's also one of the uh, important thing because um, like when we speak about discipline, which we all need to achieve some goals, you know, like uh, discipline is action. Eh? It, it's, it's not just uh, good intentions because with good intentions, you know, it's, it's nice, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna, gonna help you with that. So um, the harder you're gonna work as well in your training, the, the easiest is gonna be for everybody, you know, and particularly uh, when, when I have difficult moments in my training, when I'm thinking like, you know, I'm, I'm suffering or I don't feel that good. I always think, what is my competition doing? Are they gonna give up or are they gonna train harder? And if you can try to at least train as hard as your competition or even better more than them, you will have an advantage. And also I think it's a mental advantage. If you, if you know that you really work hard, it's gonna, it's gonna help you a lot for sure. So uh, work harder than your competition for sure and your training is, is one of them. I think it's an important point. And then, uh, you know, in the military, they have a phrase which is quite common, like train hard, fight easy. And I think this is really important because it's, it's very logical, but it's also true. But you have to work your ass off really to, in order to get good. And if you work hard in the training, your meat preparation and in your competition, and here again, that's the, the, the link for peak performance, is going to make your life so much easier. But if you, if you just slack everything a little bit and then expect that in the competition you will do a peak performance, that's, that's never going to happen. So make sure that, that you, you know, work, train really hard and then you can do the competition quite easily. Um, another thing what I think is really important in general is to invest in yourself. And with this I mean trying to get as much knowledge as possible. Um, by probably watching already now this webinar, you're investing some part of that. So that's already very good. Because now with the, with the YouTube channels, with all the books that we have, with the people that we know, there's so much information available. Trying to get it, you have to invest in yourself to get smarter, to get more knowledge. You have maybe different points of view because all these things is gonna make you better in training. And uh, I think this is, this is super important because if you just, stay in the environment where you always are and all, always meet the same people and you have to get away from that environment uh, from time to time so you get some new ideas. I think that's, uh, that's really important. And at the same time, when you speak with other people and when you have um, information or, you know, it can be even from, let's say, uh, Tony Robbins, you know, he's like a motivational speaker. Uh, even from this guy, there's a lot of interesting videos that we can apply in our training, in our goal setting, uh, etc. So, being inspired by other people—that's that's really awesome. You know, I think uh, uh, through all my years, there's a lot of people that have inspired me, and I think that's uh, that's very very helpful. Then, when you're training, so what's this gonna help us uh, in in the training? Visualization, I think this is super important because um, our brain is like a really powerful tool and it can, do, it can do like amazing things. And if you visualize in the proper way and etc., and you spend time in it and you, you really want to learn it, it can create a picture in your mind that's almost as realistic as it is. Because if you think about it, you know, we're, we're skydivers or we fly in a tunnel, uh, particularly skydiving, let's say you do 12 jumps a day or even 15 jumps a day it's just 15 minutes spending time in our sport on a whole day while if you go play golf or tennis you can spend hours per day you know so because we're limited with the time that we have to train and see the pictures that we should be seeing visualization is a very important training tool that can help you a lot 
And you need to learn it in training. Because the better you learn it in training, the things will, the pictures will be very uh, common when you have your competition. So uh, I think that's that's a very very important visualization. You know, um, let me just check. What are you? Yeah, I was going to suggest, Roy, before we move um, to section three um, towards the meat preparation, we could take a couple of questions. So sure. if we circle back into goal setting, you mm -hmm. did mention that okay. Um, uh, you need to be realistic, but you need to reach outside your comfort zone to be able to go into progression from where you are. And there's a question from Joseph in terms of whether the goal should be very realistic or, you know, it be something that you feel is like really out of your reach at the moment. So how do you balance that out? Well, this is a very good question. I think uh, when we speak about having a dream and setting a goal, it should be always more than realistic. Because if it's just realistic, you know, we, we can manage, you know, having a dream is always a bit more than what we think we can achieve at this moment. Uh, so how big you want to go with a dream, that's up to you. But, but definitely, I, I think it, it will help to, yeah, a dream is, in my opinion, more than what I already know I can. You know, achieving a dream is something special more. So, but of course we have to be in somewhere uh, realistic. You know, I'm never gonna be the best singer in the world. I know this. So if I would put that goal, I'm probably gonna be disappointed, you know? So it's, uh, it's a bit uh, of both, but uh, yeah, I mean, make it a bit challenging for sure. So that's... Uh, so I guess that also um, connects with what you're gonna be talking about next in terms of visualization. So if you are setting yourself up with a goal that is outside your comfort zone and it means then that you can actually visualize yourself doing that perfect performance uh, in you know whatever it is that you need to learn. Um, there is also uh, Dee Marie has asked a question whether you could give some examples of goals that you might set. Um, yes for sure I think the the kind of goals uh, that you said is very personal. Uh, it can be uh, whatever is a dream for you, it can be. I mean, for me at the moment, uh, uh, my goal is still to compete uh, next year at the, at the World Championship. Um, can be, for example, getting a higher rating in, in my piloting, uh, whatever it is, you know, it, it's very personal. And uh, a dream for me can be something very boring for you or the opposite, you know. so. I would say, Dean Marie, for you, you know, if you would like, if your dream would be to come to Europe every month to fly in Windy uh, with the guys, you know, that would be totally fine. So, uh, yeah, it's whatever, whatever you feel is your dream, you can set it and, and then just check if it's more or less realistic. Maybe it's not in reach at this moment, but maybe next year it is. So, with setting goals, you also spread it over time, you know, it doesn't need to happen tomorrow. It can be next year or in two years or in four years. That's just very dependent. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, you're always welcome. Huh? <laughs> so for the people that didn't read the chat, uh, we know each other, so it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's good. All right, so if, um, are there any questions from the participants about the start of training? I really loved how you were talking about um, you know, raising your standards and going from should to must, train hard, fight easy. I think these are like, I'm just going to take this webinar as, as uh, advice for life. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I, I think uh, a lot of stuff, whether it's in sport, we can apply it in, in daily life. But the opposite is also true in daily life, how you, how you work with some, some things, you can also apply it in sport. You know, it's, it's connected, but at the end, if you want to achieve something more in life, yes, we have to work hard for that. And um, you know, it's uh, now we think very competitive because now you know we're, we're with athletes at the moment. But it's yeah, it's train hard and, and then in the competition make your life easy. It's like in school, you know, if you do all your homework and you study you know, properly, you know, and then when you have your exam, you, you're gonna feel quite confident because you know that you did the work through the whole year and you, you know you studied the hours that you had to do, maybe even a bit more. And that confidence is gonna help you a lot to stay you know, calm and keep the nerves down. 
And in, in skydiving or in wind tunnel flying, it's the same thing. When you go to a competition and you know that you prepared well and you know that you did what you could do and you develop your skills and your personality as a flyer or a competitor, it's going to give you a lot of confidence and you're going to be more relaxed and being more relaxed is going to help. You know, so it's, a, it's quite a snowball actually that, that keeps you, uh, that, that will roll like that. So, yeah. Thanks, Roy. Um, so we're now just over halfway through. So if we're going to move into <laughs> section three about training or, or the meat prep. Yes. Um, before I do that, I just go really quickly a, a few other points because otherwise we're going to skip important steps. I think when, when, you, when we're training, because this is very important for the competition, the last topic we will uh, discuss, is uh, have a routine in training. I think this is very important because if you work really hard and you always do the same things and you, you, you try new things, but once you have a routine that really works for you, just stick to it because that's going to give you a lot of calmness in your head also in the competition. And once you have a good system that works for you, do not change it last moment. You know, there's no, no panic buttons that, uh, that we need to push. All right, so once we do all this kind of stuff, you know, we need to make it a little bit short now. Um, then you're going to go to your meat preparation. So we had we had the goal setting. So we know what we want to achieve. We, we put all the things there. Then we did the training. And then there's a phase between training and competing. And that's actually when you have your meat preparation. Um, what is very important, and this is a bit linked between training and meat preparation, is to have a good system for briefing and debriefing. So the structure of this part is really important in order to measure the progression and etc. You know, and evaluate the things that you have to do. So uh, briefing, debriefing structure is very important. Always keep good records of what you're doing, uh, whether that is uh, swooping a certain distance or uh, in four way making certain uh, amount of points uh, or block times, whatever it is, but we need to have something to measure and to evaluate. So make sure that you don't uh, skip that step. Another thing that we also need to do, and this is of course very important as well, the thing we have to learn in training, and particularly this comes back in meat preparation, is distraction control. Distraction control is like super important because we all know if you get distracted easily, uh, you, you're going to have, a, you make a mistake or you have a brain log or you forget anything else. So distraction control is super important and, and also the meat preparation. Um, remember that the meat is one in training. If you train hard, as we said before, you know, uh, train hard, fight easy. The meat is one normally in training. So make sure that, that you don't forget that part. Um, Whenever you go, when you want to do your meet, uh, sorry, when, whenever you want to do your peak performance, excuse me, um, you have to do kind of simulation of the competition. So you're going to do a, a simulation of competition where you're going to try to uh, have the same kind of feelings, environment, uh, circumstances you, you're trying to duplicate. So you're going to put yourself already in that kind of situation. And I think this is really important. So simulate competition environment. I think that's uh, as a meat preparation very important. So you have a kind of general repetition before the competition itself. Uh, then something when you do your meat preparation, particularly, you should um, train with the same kind of intensity and speed as you're planning to do the competition with. I, I know it's a common mistake. Uh, I also made those mistakes in the past. Is that when you are getting close to a competition, you're trying to fly even faster, you know, and you want to push more and more. But at the end, that's actually not so good because consistency, consistency is actually the key factor that makes you usually winning champions. Um, and that consistency, you know, at one point you have to trust yourself, trust the team, uh, that what you're doing is good. And instead of always focusing on going farther, uh, faster and faster, just think about, hey, you know, I, I know my stuff. This is as, far as, as fast as we can get. Now work on consistency. And uh, also one of the things, consider that it's totally fine to accept your own or team's weaknesses. We all have str strong points, we all have weak sides, but accept that we cannot be perfect in everything. So 
you know, it's, it's something that I see a lot of people, they, they worry about it. Like, oh, you know, I'm going to maybe make a mistake. It, you know, we all going to make mistakes. Another thing, um, really close before the competition, make sure that you're rested eh? because uh, do, not, do not get uh, too intense training and do not, do not do some panic training at the end and trying to do everything quick, quick. Uh, make sure that the mind is really important that it's rested. Physically, normally you can still be tired and, and you know, fly still hard or whatever you're doing in competition. But it, the mind really has to be rested. And I think it's a thin line finding the right balance between being rested with your mind, but also still stay a bit in the game. So for example, I'm not advising anybody to not jump uh, uh, the last week. Well, I should rephrase that. Do not, uh, don't jump the last week before a competition, for example. Um, no, probably that. <laughs> I still didn't say that, right? I'm sorry. No, so you should be jumping before the competition, but not too much, you know? So you're gonna stay in the game, but, but do not exaggerate, you know? So trust what you have been building up. And then, then actually you can go to the competition. And this is actually the last part of, the, of this uh, webinar that I wanna speak about, is the competition itself. So a lot of times what you need to learn, you need to learn to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I think this is something that a lot of people struggle with because, you know, going to a competition, you're going to have some more stress. You're going to have some more vibes around it that's going to make you more nervous. So learn to be comfortable with being uncomfortable and do not try to fight it. Just let it happen. And I think that's really um, important. You know, you need to learn to love the fight. And I think that that's really important. Instead of being scared and trying to avoid some things, just embrace also the, the negative things because it's part of the competition and you choose for it, you know, so it, it should be actually quite fun. Um, what's going to help you when you, when you want to build up self-esteem for competition, um, use the positive experience from the past in your training or from prior meets that you have done. If you know that in training you do certain really, some, third, some uh, things really good, or you did competitions where you know, hey, I, I did this well, use that positive uh, experience and take it into you, your new competition. I think that's always helps. And yeah, for sure, sometimes we fuck up and it's gonna be like this, but you know, trying to, uh, trying to stay positive in this and just enjoy the moment. Then, um, let me just see, yeah, questions, okay. Um, then some practical things in a competition. What's, what can help you with your peak performance? I think one of the things is the setup and comfort at the drop zone. So if you go to a competition, uh, you know, trying to make the setup in a way that is practical and that gives you also some comfort, you know, so you, you can be relaxed there. So don't, don't make it too hectic or that you don't know what's going on. Um, also, uh, stay energetic. So make sure that you drink enough, that you eat enough, you know, that, that you stay warm enough or sometimes cool enough, depending where you're going, but keep the energy positive, you know, that's, that's important. And when you're uh, working in, with a team or when you have other people around it, also make sure that you communicate well, you know, because it's, it's important that particularly when you're with a team that you know where everybody is and what we're doing, not that we're looking for each other and that we, we're spending, uh, wasting actually energy. Um, another thing that is important is to know the rules. And that sounds maybe a bit like weird, but the more you know the rules from the discipline that you're doing, the easier it's going to get. It's, I see a lot of time people really stressing out because, oh, they hear something that the judges said that or the judges said this but really trying to, trying to take it easy and learn, take the time to learn the, the rules. I think this is really important. And of course, when we're gonna do the competition, have a positive visualization. You know, do not think the stuff that is not good, always think the positives because that the brain will, uh, will uh, execute much easier the things that are positive than the things that you should not be doing. So always think the, the thing that you should be doing. Um, and just relax a bit, you know, everybody makes mistakes and 
just take it uh, easy on yourself. Do not put too much pressure. You know, nobody's perfect. And uh, I just would say, trust yourself, trust your team. Um, and at the end, ideally, if we, if we did a really good preparation, when we work hard in the training and we go to the competition, ideally, everything should be going automatic, you know, so that we, we fly on an automatic pilot. We do the same visualization. We do the same drills. We do the same way where we prepare everything because that, that is going to be a routine that you already know that you have done for hundreds or thousands of times. And that's going to calm the mind down a lot. So that also makes it easier for distraction control. Again, distraction control comes always back in your training. It comes back in your meat preparation. It comes back in your competition, obviously. Uh, but distraction control is something you need to learn. You know, we all have to learn it. Uh, so spend enough time there and do the same thing in competition. So, um, and another thing, uh, what I think is important is when you want to do a peak performance, do not put too much pressure on yourself and also see the total picture, you know, it's not just one little thing, trying to see the big picture of the whole competition and put things in perspective, you know, at the end, if you would not win, I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen? You know, yeah, maybe your ego get a bump, but that's, that's pretty much it. Eh? Um, and I think it is the same thing. So see the competition as important, but also, um, it should be almost in a healthy and playful way. And I think this also helps a lot to put the nerves down. And uh, so, yes, of course we work hard and stuff, but at the end, I know it sounds a bit, uh, well, I don't know exactly the right word, but when I say, you know, if I say it's just a game, a game I know it's a, I call it in English, Maria. It's a, um, Well, let's say it's like a classic sentence. I don't have the right word in English now, but it's in one way, if you, if you put things in perspective, it does help you as well. so it's, uh, yeah, I think if you take consideration all these things, I think that uh, will help you a lot with, uh, with doing a peak performance. Obviously, like, like I already mentioned, there's so many things to speak about, but we just have 40 minutes. We just have uh, six minutes left. Yeah. So I just want to leave it here. And I'm uh, more than happy to answer some questions if somebody has. Awesome. So we've got one question from Joseph here. Uh, he's asking if you could please give a brief example of a four-way briefing and debriefing structure, both for tunnel and for ear. Well, that depends, of course, on the team because it, uh, a briefing structure, I mean, it, it depends a bit on the experience. It depends on the goals that, that they are setting. Um, but it can be, for example, uh, when you want to have a structure, it should be basically the same thing. So when there's a team, uh, let's say you're training with a team, with a structure, I mean that first, for example, you say, okay, we first start walking the jumps. So instead of creeping it, you're first going to walk the jumps. First, you walk everything in the normal slots, and then you're going to look for possibilities for other slots. So it can be slot switches, it can be A slot, B slot. It can be even something totally different. But first, you walk the jumps, you walk everything standard, then you're gonna look to non-standard things. When everybody's happy, okay, then you can say, now we're gonna go to the creepers. And on the creepers, you're gonna do the same jump, obviously. And then you're gonna work on access first, for example, or you can say, hey, we're gonna work first on the keys. Where is the keys coming from? Who should be keying? Okay. And then you're gonna look at the moves. And then when everybody's happy, you can say, okay, now we just take it from the exit. Uh, shake, 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 ready, set, go. And you do it for, let's say, 35, 40 seconds. Take a small break and then you do it again. For example, that can be a kind of structure, but that structure is gonna help you a lot with always having a routine. But this can be team depending. It's, this is just an example, but it can also work in different ways. And that would be the same with day briefing or whatever, whatever you have in mind. That's awesome. I actually have one question here. Um, you mentioned in the meet prep phase that you should keep a really good record to be able to um, measure and evaluate your performance. So could you give some examples of that? Like how, how do you do that? Well, the, the way I do it, so in the normal training, we keep track of records. And with this, I mean, um, 
we're going to time the exits, for example. Uh, let's say you do a certain exit, and then you're going to time it. How long does it take before you break the formation so you can, that you can continue? Or you take a block time. You take, for example, a certain block, you time from start till finish, then you know it. And when you do that, I don't want to say every single time, but when you do it very regularly, you can see the progression, and then you also know, hey, we're very good in this block, or we're not good in that block. Uh, but it can be with anything. It's not just with four-way. Yeah, I mean, when you swoop, you have to do also keeping track of what you're doing, you know, because otherwise, if you want to find it out in the competition, uh, it's probably going to be a bad idea. So keeping track of stuff will help you to you know, know what you're doing. It's like having a business. If you don't know how much sales you're having and then you hope that you're going to be rich at the end of the year, it can be a bad surprise. You know, so it's, it's, it's actually just common sense in that sense. All right, thank you so much, Roy, for that. Um, participants, we have only a couple of minutes left. If you have questions, now is the time to ask. Otherwise, I'm just gonna make this, you know, a personal mission of uh, asking Roy, because I'm super curious about all of what you've said. Um, one of the things that you mentioned that sort of hit home for me was as well the, you know, get comfortable with being uncom um, uncomfortable. And I guess that's something that comes with time and with experience as well as your competence and your confidence in yourself grows. But what would be like the, you know, basic message there that you could give people of like, you know, what can you do practically on a practical, tangible level? To get a bit more comfortable with that um, i think there are two main things that that helps a lot is first of all put yourself often enough in a situation where you're gonna have that sensation of of nervousness or about fear whatever it is um, the more often you get in in it the more often you have an opportunity to practice it and the other side you don't need to always be physically there you also can visualize it and with, again, like I mentioned before, if you have a good visualization skills, this is going to almost put your reality there. For example, I can visualize myself being in a place that really feels like there. And the more time you spend there, the more time you have to, uh, you have to, to understand, to understand if the, the, the fears you have or the nervousness that you feel, if that's really grounded, you know, because maybe you're making yourself nervous for nothing and at the same time we also like to be in that environment somewhere because that's the reason why i always go back to competition so instead of you know trying to push it always away and be worried about it to get those butterflies in your stomach i like to just learn to embrace it it takes time and right? you cannot do this from one day to the other but if you learn to love the fight which will take some time you you will see that com competing is so much easier it's going to help a lot and, and for sure this is where you where your peak performance is going to allow you to do the best that you can because there's nothing that uh, holds you back from it you know if you're too nervous then uh, for sure you will, your performance will suffer so that's uh... <laughs> nice goggles <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, Roy. And thank you all the participants who came. This was our last uh, Woogie webinar. And I've popped up Roy's contact information in the chat box. His email is roy.fscoaching at gmail.com. And you can find him on Facebook. His page is FS Coaching Roy Janssen. For those of you who are looking at this as a recording, and um, yeah, I just want to thank you. I think this was the best webinar so far, pretty much. I love the content that you shared with us, Roy. Thank you. Uh, honestly, um, this is, like I said, advice for life. You can, you know, you can apply this to your everyday life or to any hobby that you have or work or anything. So thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks. And thank you guys for, for tuning in. Huh? Yeah. I appreciate it. So I'm going to unmute everyone so everyone can say thank you. All right. Three, two, one, go. Thank you, Roy. You're welcome. <laughs> all right. Thank you, everyone. Have a lovely day wherever you are. Good night. If you're Don't turn red. Don't turn red. All right. <laughs> Bye, guys.
Bye. 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 Stay safe.